Today we're going to show the proper way to remove and replace the 6000 EPCU from the purge controller without taking out any wires or uh, taking out the terminals. This procedure should be done only when the area is known to be safe. The 6000 series is a type X system and this is the control unit, the manifolds built into the unit and the vent makes up the whole system. Okay, the procedure to replace the EPCU inside the 6000 unit, the first thing you do is have to uh, take off the lid. Now again, remember, the area has to be safe of all hazardous gases or dust. So, uh, there's six screws on here. I've loosened some of them already uh, so that uh, we don't have to wait around. And um, you'll see that this unit has a ground wire to the UIC and also this uh, cable to the interface unit. Uh, make sure that this doesn't dangle or you break the wire. If you break the wire, just replace it. So I'm just gonna put that back there. And you, uh, the EPCU will be inside this explosion-proof housing. Um, there's a lot of threads on it. I've loosened it already so that, uh, again, we don't have to worry about the time. So you pull this off. And inside here is the EPCU with a black cover over it with the terminals. Intrinsically safe terminals and the power terminals. And these power terminals and, and IS terminals, they pop off. So uh, do, whatever you do, do not, these are kind of tight, do not take a screwdriver and use this flange size to uh, loosen the terminals. Otherwise, you'll scratch that up. And being an explosion-proof enclosure, you have to be very uh, concerned about scratching uh, the flame path. So uh, just put your finger there and you can pop that off and push that off to the side. There's a ground terminals inside here as well. And uh, you must uh, put those off to the side. And this one's a little bit easier to pop off. This, is the, this goes to the intrinsically safe um, termina termina termination board. Now when you have this off, this black cover has to be uh, taken out. Now this black cover is very tightly fit inside there, so you have to kind of make sure that the wires are, uh, these power wires are, you know, inside there. And what you do is you just loosen it and pop it off, and now you have uh, the EPCU exposed. Now the EPCU, from the picture, you'll see that there's uh, two grooves inside on the bottom of this board. and. Uh, we're going to loosen the, these two screws with a Phillips screwdriver, a long handle screwdriver to get inside there. Now, just loosen the screws. Don't remove them because you don't have to because of the slot. So what I'll do is I'll just take that, just loosen it a little bit. Take it on the other one. Just loosen it a little bit. From there, what I do is I go counterclockwise. And again, you have to be kind of careful. You'll, you'll feel it coming out and the EPCU comes out. So uh, you take the faulty PCU out and then you can put the new P, uh, EPCU in. Now, a little trick about this is there's two screws in there from the picture you can see. Um, what I generally do is I loosen those two screws to just about when they're just about to come out. And this will help um, kind of seat that in there properly and then rotate it so that it, it seats uh, pretty good, easily. As you can see, there's a, um, a lock washer on the screw and it sometimes falls down. So you want to make sure that pops up. So you take the new EPCU and you can see that the smaller terminals are IIS and the larger terminals are power terminals. And you slide that in there and you'll see from the grooves, uh, you have to put it on an angle and then you rotate it clockwise. So you get it in there and you kind of feel it. Get there. I can feel it going in there. And then you rotate it. And you can see that this is pretty much 
parallel with everything. Then I take the screwdriver. Now I can screw everything down so it's tight, hand tight. Now um, the next part is to put back the shielding cover. This is very important. Do not lose this because this will keep the separations from the intrinsically safe to ground to the power side. This is very important for the safety of the product. So again, pull back these wires and make sure that everything is in position. I think I got one wire there that's not right. Okay, there we go. There we go. And make sure that seats all the way down so that it's flush with, or, or a little bit below the uh, fuses. And you can see in the picture of a correct uh, position and a wrong position. So once that's in there, the next thing to do is to make sure that uh, these terminals are seated properly. Now, what I would do is I would make sure that all the wires are still on the terminals because you're, you're kind of messing around there and uh, you want to make sure that none of them have popped off. So I can see this is okay and uh, I can push that in and pop it in and I can see from here my green uh, uh, ground wire had popped out of the terminal so I could put that back in properly and then uh, seat it and make sure that the terminals are properly in the right slots. Another important part is to make sure that this top is properly uh, screwed on to um, the EX enclosure to make sure that you have proper explosion proof uh, protection. And once that's on there, you can put on the lid. Make sure those wires are in there properly. And then screw down the screws and you're set to go. Remember, this area must be safe of all hazardous gases and dust. This is an unsafe procedure to do if the area is not safe. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, then send it back on an RMA and uh, we can usually repair it in about one to three days.